Number one issue um, or topic to talk about is this crazy incident with Harry Maguire in Greece, Mykonos, um, to be exact. We don't really know the details uh, around it. Some people are saying that his sister got stabbed with some sort of horse tranquilizer. Some people are saying it's ketamine. Some people are saying she got stabbed with a pen, with a pencil, with a straw. Regardless, some sort of altercation happened with um, Harry Maguire's crew and some unknown um, collective of people, whether they're Albanian gangsters or just um, rival fans, we have no idea. It escalates into the point of some sort of physical altercation. They have a fight. Unbeknownst to them, there are some plainclothes police officers in this establishment, obviously trying to keep an eye on things. They get involved. No one's aware that they're plainclothes police officers. They think it's another group of people. The fight escalates and it gets to a point where they're beefing. People are trying to restrain Harry Maguire and he's slabbed and he's a big dude, big slabbed dude um, who would probably, you know, probably, he reminds you of like a footballing version of Stipe Miocic, right? He's got that kind of massive, he's got that kind of, you know when, yeah, he's got that finger that some white people are like really small and frail. And some are just huge. There's no middle ground in it. They're just big. And he's got that kind of big Nordic kind of <laughs> King George the Eighth wearing ass kind of body frame in it. So you can imagine what it must, what, what, how hard it must have been for the police officers in Greece to kind of hold him down. Um, so yeah, they tried to pin him down. It didn't work. Then it got to a point where it escalated and he was trying to bribe somebody. I think that's the one accusation that's sticking so far. I think the assault stuff, I don't know, they're kind of arguing around that and maybe the reason why it happened, but the bribery seems to be an actual issue. Like he was trying to bribe um, the Greek officials or telling them, asking them who I am rhetorically, offering money, you know, doing the standard rich guy thing, what they do when they get in trouble, they think money and their status is going to allow them to to kind of slip out of the situation which is you know they probably have a reason they probably have um they probably um have some sort of right to think that because i'm sure they've been in other situations where that's worked or they've heard of stories but usually you know for people that are sane people that are rational people that are just decent if they hear that they're going to be even more incensed they're going to be probably personally offended that you will think that you can corrupt them to such just an extent and they're going to make sure that they kind of come down on you like a ton of bricks so it then got to a point where you go in trial one day trial some weird shit you got found guilty and um, now he's trying to appeal the decision. So the thing at hand here is obviously he's Manchester United captain. I don't agree with him being Manchester United captain in the first place. Like I said, um, it's his first season at United. Big money signing, 80 million plus, I think, from Leicester. Um, again, one of the... One, he was a, a, a big signing because we identified our defence as being one of the areas that we needed to improve upon. Um, we didn't really... We had a lot of square pegs around holes. None of our combinations seemed to make sense. None of our combinations the manager seemed to trust, even though I'm still a big believer that you could have easily got... We could have easily got away with having a partnership of a really fit um, Bayi and Smalling. I think defensive, partner, defensive partnerships really um, are crucial. You need to have somebody that can attack the ball and somebody that can bring the ball out from defense. I think that's basically the 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 makeup of a perfect um, defensive partnership. I think you look at somebody like Rio Ferdinand and, uh, and Manny Vidic back in the day, they were co perfect complement to each other, right? Vidic was sort of like more in a John Terry sort of mold. And I guess Rio Ferdinand, of course, was, you know, a Rolls Royce of a defender in terms of carrying the ball out. But those two kind of um, personas are needed in a defensive line. And I guess for a longest period of time, Bayer would be injured, um, Smalling would be out of favor, Rojo would be Rojo so it's hard to kind of have people complimenting it and then when somebody like a Lindelof comes in who doesn't really seem to fit any kind of he's not he's like in the middle he's not necessarily aggressive and he's not necessarily good on the ball um, he doesn't do anything that well so it's hard to marry him up with somebody so we had to go and buy some we had to go and buy a commanding centre back and I think unfortunately for Maguire he, he looks the part but I don't think he's as vocal um, and has great organisational skills as he kind of carries on the pitch he's not that great he needs somebody next to him that has that maybe now or that they can kind of bounce off each other he doesn't necessarily have the ability to kind of you know hold a fort behind at the back line there as well as you'd hope so that anyway who knows that could change it's his first season he could get better but i always thought it was a bit premature get given the camp to armband but i'm also understanding that bench United is a business now we're not a football club anymore so i'm pretty sure this had more to do with the fact that he was the england captain um they tried to make him be the new face of england the new john terry um you know it, it made sense for marketing um he's just you know he's a small town boy from sheffield 
I'm not small town boy, but you know he's a you know he's he's a pretty decent dude. It seems like from all accounts from Sheffield, loves his football, loves his family. It made sense for them to kind of give him the captain's armband in that way, shape, or form. But I really think the captain's armband was a bad thing, and it really, if anything, put more attention on him and people scrutinize him a lot more than they probably should have. And I think in general, his first season has probably been about, about what a five or a six. He hasn't been that great. But the best thing about him is that he never gets injured, right? He's been one of us kind of consistent performers in the back line, which is probably the thing that kind of benefited us most in terms of keeping our good defensive record throughout the season. Um, but it can needs to be said, if you're a Manchester United captain and you get involved in the Passa Passa with some people abroad, especially Greek authorities, um, you have to get, you, you the armband has to be stripped from you. Whether it's temporarily um, stripped from him, the captaincy, or whether it's something that's done permanently, it has to be. And I think, again, I think, unfortunately, we already have our issues, Man United, as I mentioned in the previous video, with our lack of transfers, our lack of organisation. We don't need this. We don't need this headache. Um, Social doesn't need this headache. Maguire doesn't need this headache. We as a club don't need this headache. It's just unnecessary. And I think at any other big club, um, Maguire's captaincy would have got revoked or stripped from him for the time being whilst the investigation was concluding. And if it transpired that he the allegations were false and the Greek authorities were kind of making it up in order to kind of extort him or whatever it may be, fair enough, give him back the armband. I've got no problem with that. But I think at the moment, we have to apply the same level of law that we'd have to do with every, every other player. And I think in some cases, like in the NFL, they have this thing where if you're performing really well, I think a lot of people say this. I think I've heard people mention this on the Pat McAfee show, which is a great um, show. I really make me check it out. Even if you don't watch American football, it's great to kind of get into the weeds of what goes on behind the scenes. But they always say that there's always one rule for you and one rule for the other, right? If you've got a star running back, a star quarterback, a star defensive lineman, he's definitely going to get treated a lot differently to that um from management than you are if you're just some guy that makes up the numbers that's an but they they they're all aware of that because what is understood is that if you're going to be the if you're going to be the Dennis Rodman of your team you need to perform on the pitch that's no there's no kind of if or maybe right so you look at someone like an Antonio Brown when Antonio Brown was performing at a high level and his performances on the football pitch on the football field were out um kind of uh outstripped his nonsense off the pitch clubs were willing to put up with it organizations were to put up with it the moment it started to kind of get imbalanced they kind of let him go and i think it was just an example in football is similar i think you know if you got ronaldo in your team and he decides to go out on the lash which he doesn't and come back at 4 a.m but he turns to training and he still scores your hatchet the next week you're not going to treat him the same way you are going to treat an academy graduate or some random guy that's making up the squad numbers it's not, not the same and unfortunately for Harry Maguire, he's not performing at the level that would allow him to have the benefit of the doubt or allow him to kind of be treated with any kind of exemption, exception. He shouldn't be because he should be treated like anybody else because we know if he was, if he was, if this was, if this was Jesse Lingard, if this was one matter for, even for instance, who, you know, again, people don't really want him at the club anymore because he's getting a bit, you know, long in the tooth. <coughs> The one matter thing is really unfortunate because I really do think he he hasn't been utilized well at United. I think he's never really been played in his favorite number ten position, even even more so now where you know we have a pretty strong starting eleven. If there are occasions where Bruno Fernandez can't can't play, Mata should be the first person on the team sheet that plays instead of him. Um, instead he gets he gets put on a wing, he gets put as an inverted forward, like just strange positions. You never got played in an actual number ten. I think if you put one matter right now and you plop him within. Man City, you put Plum within a, even Seville, how they play with Ever Benega, one matter will be incredible. So that's, I'm really uh, upset with him. But even I think if, if Lingard, one matter, if God forbid Phil Jones got caught in this sort of nonsense, any other player that's not performing well, let's not even mention a Paul Pogba, right? If they got caught doing exactly the same thing or found guilty doing the same thing, even if there was an appeal that was coming up, people would be losing their mind, losing their mind, losing their mind. So we have to treat them the same way. We have to. And I guess that's the honest thing that's a bit annoying about this is the the bias that happens and the moving of the goalposts. You saw headlines like, oh, he's not that kind of guy and all this sort of stuff. It's like, dude, I'm all right with giving people the benefit of the doubt, but let's do it to everybody. Don't just extend the benefit of the doubt to people that you like or the people that you can easily understand or easily pigeonhole or easily car 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 characterize, characterize, whatever it may be called, right? Because let's, let's be real. Like, I love... I love Grealish, but if, but if Pogba did what Grealish did, right, driving drunk, crashing his car into a sidewalk, walking around with one slipper on, high off his mind or drunk, whatever you may be, like imagine the stick that he would have got. Imagine the insults. Jamie Carragher was allowed to spit at someone's face, a child's face, actually, right? Um, and he was allowed to come. You know, people kind of 
it's effectively moved on for that situation. Nothing really has transpired from it. Like, allow that thing to happen to someone like an Ian Wright, God forbid, right? Um, a Sol Campbell, even like a Paul Inns or people saying to not have any time for now at the moment, right? It's just not, I just don't, that's what I don't like. Uh, let's apply the rule of law to everybody the same way and let's um, make sure we uphold some kind of standard as a club. If there's one thing that we're not, you know, we're not too good on the transfers. We haven't necessarily acting like a top club in terms of how we've been sorting our infrastructure, but let's at least in terms of the discipline, and in terms of what's allowed and what's not so allowed as a club captain, as a representative of the football club, let's have one rule, one rule for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, because if not, the club is going to be in disarray, man, complete disarray. This is an article here from Sky Sports. Harry Maguire mentioned that captain keeps armband as he awaits retrial. He says, um, Maguire was handed a 20 month, a 21 month suspended sentence on Tuesday after being found guilty by a Greek court of aggra aggravated assault, resisting arrest and repeated attempts of bribery. The 27 year old was convicted of all the charges against him by a court on the island of Cyrus. He was arrested with his brother and friend after a fight broke out while he was on holiday in Mykonos over claimed the of injected and suspected rape drug. Uh, however, on Wednesday, United confirmed in a statement that Maguire's legal team had an appeal accepted adding this means that harry has no criminal record and is once again presumed innocent until proven guilty it is understood no date has yet been set for the appeal and united are aware that a number of months before the case is heard again which again i just don't think social has really got enough issues to deal with in terms of how to handle the glazers and what to do with the transfers and you know the squad evolution and if we're going to challenge for trophies he doesn't need his trouble. He doesn't need his, this this headache. Um, Maguire should just be stripped of the captaincy and we should just move on. So this isn't a constant conversation in the press conference along with if we're going to sign Jadon Sancho or not. It's not the headache that we need. But again, I'm not too sure. Man United are so weird these days. They might actually like this in attention. They might think these clicks and this engagement is a good thing bizarre um sky sports user understands Maguire has left greece and is expected to return to manchester in the coming days following the court's original verdict the defender was withdrawn from the gary Southgate england squad having been initially selected in the most national that's a one that's an idiot in it southgate is such a numpty have how to deal with stuff really badly again may not have a bit more skin in the game because we're paying this guy he's our marquee signing we have to kind of treat it a little bit differently but england heard this story but Southgate still included him into the squad because he said he spoke to him and he says the story that you heard isn't true. He gets found guilty, so then Southgate has to take him out because he's found guilty. And now he's, he has an appeal that means he's innocent and true proven guilty and now he's still out of the squad. It's like, just put him on standby when the allegations came out first with England. We've got enough central defenders. We've got more central defenders that you can wave a stick at. It doesn't really matter who plays back there, right? Effectively, kind of. Don't, don't get me wrong. There are good and bad defenders, but that's not the problem position. Put him on standby for the time being. He's been involved in a term, you know, in a really stressful situation. It seems like for the most part, the probably last thing he wants to do is come back and play football anyway. He probably wants to get this out of the way and make sure he clears his name as soon as possible. Then he can move on with football. I don't know. Maybe some people are different, and that's how I would imagine it. Put him on standby until the the verdict has been, you know, sorted out and the case has been, you know, um, concluded, and then include him. But no, you include him. Then you have to take him out. Now he's in to proving guilty, and then what? So like madness. Um, uh, uh, da, 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 da. English decision gives them time but yeah I don't know man what do you guys think man should he be sure to the captaincy um, is it a bit OTT um, do you think there is um, he's being treated with kid gloves with you know other players won't be treated with the same thing um, does his performance have anything to do with it too should somebody that's performing as me not mediocre but like as met as he has in the last few weeks be given this kind of allowance to do what he's done let me know in the comments down below I'll be intrigued to know your thoughts